Hi there, it's Coot here, sending you love wherever you are. You know, no matter who we are, we all have visions and dreams that deep inside of us is a desire, an impulse to express more, to give more, to love more, to share more. So my question to you is, what is that dream? What is that big dream, that big vision, that big goal, that big thing that you long, that you long deep in your heart to share? See, I believe that the moment we're born, there is greatness inside of us, that you are born and there is greatness inside of you that you are made of something magical that inside of your DNA is literally miracles happening moment to moment. Yet, why do so few people on our planet today truly achieve, truly attain their full potential? You know, many of us, we, we go to the seminars and <clears throat> we read the books and we listen to the online courses and, and you know, we, we, we we, we go online and we watch YouTube and download all this positive information and we, 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 we have all this information, you see, but I believe that information by itself, even though it's helpful, is often not enough. We can practice the law of attraction. We can practice affirmations. And people often ask me, you know, as I coach people and speak around the world, people often ask me, could I practice the law of attraction and I practice you know, affirmation and being positive, but I don't understand why I'm still stuck, why I'm still not manifesting my, my dream, my vision, even though I'm being positive. I know what to do, I know what not to do, I know what I shouldn't do, but I, I, I don't understand why I'm not where I actually want to be or where I thought I'd be at this particular time in my life. Perhaps you felt the same way at some point. I know many years ago I felt the same way. I, I felt that there was so much potential I had. I felt that there was so much I wanted to give. I felt that there was so much love I wanted to share with the world that wasn't quite expressing. And you know, I believe that when we hold our gifts back, when we hold our light back, when we hold our greatness back, it's actually painful. So if we know what to do, if we know what we should say, give, express, do, because we have the information for it and the knowledge, why is it that we don't fulfill that? Why is it that we don't do those things that are good for us and take ourselves to that next level? See, I believe that what often blocks us is not lack of information. What often blocks us is our conditioning. So the moment we're born, we are born free. You are born, if you look at a child, a child is, is uh, in touch with their divinity. A child is in touch with their authentic essence, their true aliveness. A child will jump on a table and express their gifts and, and give themselves and share themselves and, and be playful and be loving. You know, a child will just express who they are. Freely, no real self-consciousness. If it cries, it will stand up. If it poops, it will stand up and just keep going. You know, this is a child. But as we grow up, we, we go into the world, we go into society, we deal with our parents. Slowly, we start becoming conditioned. As children, we learn all sorts of ways to disconnect, to shut down, to not feel, to not feel the pain of what's going on around us. Perhaps not feel the pain of being abandoned. Perhaps not feel the pain of our parents not being there. Perhaps perhaps not feel the pain of being scolded when we are loud and self-expressed or laugh or just be ourselves fully. So we learn to shut parts of ourselves down to fit in, conform, function and survive. We also learn to develop a certain character, a way of being in the world in order to get love and attention and approval. So it's like, who do I need to be in order to be loved? Wow, if I'm a nice girl, then my parents love me. If I'm, if I'm kind and I'm sweet and I'm quiet, then, then I get validation oh such a good person such a good girl such a good boy you know so we learn a certain way of being in the world sometimes often to betray ourselves we say no we say yes when we mean no and we learn this way to betray ourselves we learn a some way of functioning in the world to get love to get validation and ultimately again to survive and we become a we, we kind of become contorted into a certain shape into a certain way of being a knot that we often end up calling ourselves we say this is just who i am have you ever said that no it's just it's just when, when someone says to you well why are you being that way why are you responding that why are you so shy why are you you know not expressing your 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 truth no it's, it's just who i am 
See, my question is, is who you're being who you really are, or is it actually who you've been conditioned to be? My real work is about assisting people in questioning who they have been programmed to be so that you can, they can actually get in touch with who they really are. Because we think we have free will, that we're actually choosing in life. We, look, I have free will, I'm making the choices, I'm, I'm choosing my life. But if we really looked at some of the things that we may have manifested in our life, just take a look at your life for a moment. If you were really free, would you have chosen that person to be in relationship with? If you're really free, would you have chosen that, that made that decision? So the question becomes, what's running you really? And many times we are not actually consciously aware of what's running us. To the degree that you are programmed by your past conditioning and not aware of it is to the degree that you will be run in the present by the past and just simply recreate the past in the future and that cycle continues without being conscious. And this is why I often have people coming to, to my events or coming to me as a coach and they say, Ku, I don't understand why I'm recreating the same thing like Groundhog's Day over and over and over again. You know, I'll never forget a client of mine who came to me one day. When I looked at this client, he was so magnificent. He was so powerful. But I saw someone who, let's just say I saw someone who was like a lion. He had the energy and the power of a lion. And he came to me and he said, Kuna, I'm not fulfilling my potential. I feel like I have so much to give and so much to offer. But I feel like somehow this potential inside of me isn't quite coming out. You know, now if we are locked into a certain identi identity, a certain shape, a certain, you know, way of being out survival, then it stands to reason that, that inside of this grip of our persona, our true light, our true gifts, our true potential, our true love can't come out fully. Reminds me of a client of mine. I'll give you two quick examples. One of my clients, you know, she was a, she's an amazing woman when she came to, to work with me. And she was someone who, from the moment, she, pretty much from age four, age five, her parents were gone. They were working incredibly hard. They loved her. They cared for her. They were working incredibly hard. So they weren't really around. So she grew up pretty much taking care of herself with babysitters and grandparents and friends of friends here and there. You could say that emotionally she was abandoned, emotionally she didn't really have her parents and she learned because it was painful for a little girl to not feel her parents fully present. So unconsciously she learned to disconnect from the pain that she felt, from the sensitivity, from the need, from the lack of nourishment and nurturing from her parents that she truly wanted but didn't really have around her. So she learned as a way to cope, as a coping mechanism to disconnect and to not need, to shut down, to not feel, and ultimately as a survival strategy, she learned growing up as a child to uh, become independent, to not need anyone. Because if I don't need anyone, then I can't feel the lack of what I'm receiving. Then I can't feel the pain of not, not having anyone present because like, I don't need anyone. So she became incredibly powerful, built an incredibly successful company in the business world. So that, you, you could say that survival strategy assisted her in being successful in the world. But ultimately, as she grew into her 30s and 40s, she was still left without a relationship which she so deeply desired, but was kind of too afraid to admit she truly wanted. So by the time she came to work with me, she just kept saying, I don't understand why men don't come up to me. I don't understand why I'm not in a relationship. I don't understand why I don't attract love into my life. Because deep down, unconsciously, attracting love into her life, attracting a soulmate, a relationship, a partner into her life would require that the walls that she had learned to build around her heart to not feel the absence of her parents, it would require that to come down, which would be incredibly vulnerable. So on some level, she was deeply afraid, unconsciously, she was deeply afraid to let those walls down. and couldn't afford to let those walls down because of what that might mean. She had learned to protect her heart to not feel the pain. And what had served her when she was a child was now getting in the way of her ability to open to love, freedom, and receiving, you know, a partner into her life, intimacy into her life. 
And many times the mechanisms that we built, the strategies, the masks that we wear as children, they serve us at that point to just help us survive. And many times we take them into our adulthood and unconsciously we're just replaying them thinking that's who we are, but they actually then get in the way of the deeper expression of who you're seeking to be. So I ask you to think, what are the mechanisms, what are the personas, what are the strategies, the ways of being that you might be living out, playing out, functioning inside of, that have you, that limit you, that limit your full expression, that limit you from going to the next level. Perhaps it's being nice, perhaps it's being arrogant, perhaps it's knowing it all. You know, perhaps it's disconnecting, being emotionally shut down from your feelings as a way to just function and survive. What is it for you? Because I guarantee you in some way it's blocking you from your next level. It's blocking you because we learn, then you learn to suppress a whole part of yourself and you won't feel the full range of being truly whole. Whole. So my work really is about assisting you in First, see, the first step in transformation is becoming aware. Without awareness, we're just being run by that programming of the past. The second step is we must be willing to have the courage to be honest with ourselves about what we're feeling, where we're at, where we're not at, and what's actually going on inside of us. And many times it can be scary for us to truly be honest about, wow, this is what I really feel, because being honest might mean having to let go of the very survival mechanisms that we've learned to build in order to protect ourselves from the pain. So first step is awareness. Second step is being honest. The first step is we must be willing to process and feel to be able to heal all the things we have suppressed, the emotion, the pain, the sadness, the resentment, the, the shame, the guilt, everything we've suppressed, we must be willing to feel that and to release it fully. And see, to me, creating the next level is not even, a, and, manif and manifesting your dreams is not so much about making things happen or manifesting something. See, I believe everything is already manifested. It's really about peeling away the layers, peeling away the layers that we have learned, that you have learned to build up over time, over life experiences, those layers of protection that you've learned to build up, that actually prevents the full expression of your potential and your greatness from expressing in the world. And this is why I'm so excited about the Boundless Bliss Bali journey. The Boundless Bliss Bali journey I created three years ago. We've done seven of them in the last three years. And they have been amazing. It's an 11 and a half day transformational experiential journey where we have visionaries from around the world that come together to work with me in Bali in a transformational setting where I use Bali as the amazing backdrop to facilitate profound and deep transformation. It's about getting to the core of where you're blocked, clearing that away, and then I customize processes and an entire unique immersion experience that will literally catapult you into living your full potential and destiny. It takes work, it takes commitment, but uh, over the last three and a half years, I've been humbled to take up close to 130 amazing individuals through this profoundly deep process and it's been humbling to witness the miracles that have taken place. So if you're a leader and a visionary and you feel called to break through whatever's limited you so you can step into more of who you are, that you're ready to live your true life's purpose and you feel ready to uh, follow your calling and, and be the most authentically aligned, magnificent expression that you were born to be on this planet, I want to invite you to the Boundless Bliss Bali journey and uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, you can apply at the boundlessblissbali.com website. Check everything out if you haven't. But I invite you to feel the calling in your heart. This journey is not for everyone, but it is for those that are radically ready, that you can't wait anymore and you know you're ready to, uh, to break free. It's about freedom on every level, real freedom on every level. The freedom to be yourself, the freedom to express your gifts, the freedom to be truly powerful on this planet. So I look forward to seeing you at Boundless Bliss. If you feel the call, feel it, honor it, 
and let the magic happen. Your journey begins now.